now, FFW presents Round Zero. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to SSW Ground Zero. I am your host, Christopher Billings, and ladies and gentlemen, the culmination is tonight. Tonight, it all goes down. Every championship in SSW will be decided, including the newly redesigned, remodeled SSW Million Dollar Championship, which ironically hasn't been defended in over 16 years. The last time it was defended, uh, most of you either weren't born or or you were just toddlers and not watching wrestling yet. Uh, it's Die Hard's old million dollar championship that he won many, many years ago. Uh, and I'm actually being notified that backstage, uh, Die Hard is standing by with uh, his son, Anthony Guerrero Jr., who is competing for that million dollar championship later tonight. I'm ready to get this night underway, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are. So let's jump backstage and see whatever Die Hard is wanting to say. Junior, tonight you get to make history. No matter what happens, you will go down in history. But I want you to keep something in mind. For 16 years, that championship was sitting on the mantle in my living room. For 16 years, that championship was around my waist the last million dollar champion in car. The very last. Now Guerreros do not lose to Thompsons. It just doesn't work like that. And I know that this isn't very Guerrero family like for me to give you a pep talk before your match. But you need to go out there tonight and kick the holy hell out of Riley Thompson. You need to show him why you are the son of Die Hard. Why you are better than him. No matter what, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're competing, but you need to win tonight. You need to show these naysayers that you have what it takes. Do you understand me? Go out there, handle your business, win the million dollar championship. Stick it to the Thompsons one more time. Make them understand why the Guerreros have always been better. Why Die Hard was always better than the blood god. Why Junior is better than Riley. You need to go out there tonight and you need to prove a point. You need to do whatever it takes. Forget about the fans. Forget about Billings on commentary. Forget about everything except for that championship. When you're out there, that is the only thing that matters. Do you understand me? I want you to go out there and win. Win the million dollar championship and do it for your family well die hard not so good at doing the pep talk there to his son but needless to say it was a, a pep talk so to speak and i'm ready to get this note away hope you're ready we're going to start it off with the adrenaline championship travis porter who has been blowing it up on ringside facing taka Muri, and an adrenaline championship matchup and, and honestly we've never actually had Travis Porter compete for a singles championship he's never competed for a singles championship ever and so this is a, a big opportunity for Travis Porter tonight he, he has a great opportunity to go out here and work his his best ring work he possibly can and become the first ever FFW adrenaline champion but Unfortunately for Travis Porter, his opponent is somebody who quite possibly might have something to say about that. I mean, Takamuri has also been blowing it up on, on Genesis, and he's also been blowing it up on ringside. So Takamuri is trying to basically say to Travis Porter, hey, you're not winning tonight. I'm winning tonight. Both of these young men have an amazing opportunity to win the Adrenaline Championship at FFW Ground Zero. Winning tonight will set the groundwork for the future. No doubt about that. Whoever wins tonight, it sets the groundwork. It gives an opportunity to, you know, to really say, I was the first champion, or I held this championship. 
The Adrenaline Championship is a very prestigious championship in any company. And it defines those who are not heavyweights. Takimuri versus Travis Porter, the Adrenaline Championship, FFW Ground Zero, and here we go. And as we start this match, Takimuri gracefully pacing himself here, which I think is very wise of Takimuri to do. Takimuri switches positions to a side headlock, but Travis Porter pulls Takimuri into a big, big back elbow there. And now Travis Porter starting to, uh, you know, showboat a little bit there to uh, Takimuri as uh, Takimuri now a big knife edge chop right across the chest and that'll that'll sting tomorrow morning but as long as Travis Porter can avoid that kind of pain as you saw a kick for a kick there and uh, Travis Porter was able to dodge Takimuri or Takimuri was able to dodge Travis Porter's and, Tak and a big uh, Japanese arm drag there Takimuri runs in quick overhead arm drag and uh, Takimuri there starting to uh, stomp away on Travis Porter. Takamuri, very, very aggressive. He's a very, very aggressive wrestler. And Takamuri, of course, he missed as he went to lunge in and Travis Porter was able to move out of the way. Into that side headlock takedown there. And Travis Porter starting to try to get something going in his favor. This way, you know, he could possibly become the first ever adrenaline champion of FFW. And, and when it comes to speed, I would have to give Travis Porter, uh, you know, he's got the advantage in the speed department. Now, in technical ring, uh, you know, uh, ring savvy, I would definitely say Takamuri. Takamuri, uh, born and raised in Japan, does not speak English. Uh, he's a very dictating wrestler. Travis Porter, much more into uh, using his speed. And that's something that, and as you saw, Tra Travis Porter showing ring savvy right there as he dropped down. And oh, that, that guillotine. Travis Porter jumps in, and he didn't hit all of it. He hit Takamuri right in the back of the head and overshot it. He left Takamuri groggy for just a moment, but not long enough to keep or to knock Takamuri down. And Porter damaged himself on that, on that missed attempt there. As uh, Travis Porter trying to work a pace that he can work here. And, that's the thing with uh, with, Trav with Takamir, Travis Porter has to keep speed going. He's got to keep the tools that he's good with. Otherwise, you know, if Takamir wrestles the match he wants to the way he wants to wrestle it, then it could be a bad night in the attempted hurricane runner from Travis Porter, but a big power bomb from Takamiri there. Oh, Takamiri. Again, you can hear the fans in attendance not very appreciative of the uh, of the heel tactics of Takamiri. And Takamuri now setting Porter up in the corner. And Takamuri, big Hurricane Rana right out of that corner there. And that'll definitely uh, leave some welt on your back. That'll make it sting, no doubt about that. As uh, Takamuri now stomping away on Travis Porter. And, oh, Travis Porter just kicked the leg right out from and under Takamuri. And that is uh, one way that you just... That's not something you want to have happen in your match. And as you see, Travis Porter now, a succession of right hands there to knock Takamiri down into the cover one. And only a long one count for Travis Porter going off the ropes here. And Takamiri catches him into a big standing drop kick. Takamiri calling Porter to his feet. And oh, a big slap there. And Takamuri maybe was thinking about jumping in, but he may have thought twice there. And Takamuri, beautiful standing shooting star press, hooking the far leg here. One, two, and a two count for Takamuri as this match progresses as Travis Porter has to use his energy to kick out of that, uh, that pinfall attempt. And uh, Takamuri is getting this match. He's wrestling this match the way that he wants to wrestle, and that's where Travis Porter is doing bad. He need, Travis Porter needs to wrestle the match his way. And Travis Porter tried to fire on all cylinders with a succession of kicks, but uh, Takamiri responds with a succession of kicks of his own. And then another German suplex, this time with the bridge. One, two, and a two count for Takamiri there on Travis Porter. Oh, and Travis Porter able to stop the momentum momentarily of, of uh, Takamiri with that rib kick. 
And that big attempted Asai Moonsault as uh, Takamiri was able to roll out of the way. And now Takamiri with a basic scoop slam there. And Takamiri has had firm control thus far in this matchup. Travis Porter ran in, and as you saw, two missed drop kicks there from both of those young men as uh, Travis Porter now trying to, like I said, he's trying to get into a rhythm here, and Takamura takes a trip to the outside. And, oh, Travis Porter went to jump to the outside, but he missed as Takamura moved out of the way there. That was a horrible, horrible miscalculation by Travis Porter. As now Takamuri pounding away on the head of Travis Porter. Right here on the outside, this is not a uh, no disqualification matchup or no count out. You can get counted out. If you get counted out, it will, you know, unfortunately, since there is no champion, the, whoever is not counted out will be crowned as the champion. And Takamuri bringing Travis Porter back into the ring here. Travis Porter, though, not showing any signs of giving up thus far in this matchup. And I think that's great as uh, Takamuri's got to figure out a way to put Travis Porter away. And, and the same with Travis Porter. He's got to figure out a way to put... Oh, and that, that back head kick from, uh, from Takamuri going for the cover here. One, two, and only a two count. And Travis Porter here with that big... Leg drop Bulldog there, going for the cover here. One, two, and almost a three count for Travis Porter. And the fans came unglued there. Travis Porter, big DDT. Again, going for the cover here. One, two, and another two count. Travis Porter now, oh, that springboard leg drop there. Hooking the far leg again. One, two, and only a two count as these fans have come unglued and Travis Porter again going for a roll up. Another two count there as uh, Takamura able to get himself out. And wait a second. Oh, big backdrop from Travis Porter to Takamura and the fans are, it, it have exploded, ladies and gentlemen. And Travis Porter hitting the ropes. What's he going to do? Oh, Jesus. A big flip right to the outside there. And Travis Porter is back in control of this matchup, ladies and gentlemen. And for Takamuri, he's got us. And Takamuri quickly rolls right back to the outside of the ring. And now, wait a second, Takamuri. Oh! And another German suplex with the bridge. One, two, and a two count. As uh, Travis Porter barely got his shoulders off the mat there. Oh, and that big running elbow right in the corner there. That'll, that's not going to help a headache or a hangover. Most definitely, as uh, Takamuri now, when he used that leverage of rolling out of the ring to uh, as a weapon, and uh, it, it worked in his favor because now Takamuri is in control of Travis Porter here. And Takamuri again, another kick right to the back of the skull, ladies and gentlemen. It does not get any more vicious than that. And we've seen this before. Oh, Takamuri here. He's got this submission hold locked in. And he is wrenching on it. Will Travis Porter submit or will he find a way to get out of the submission hold? He's Takamuri's wrenching and Travis Porter's trying to, to hang in here. He's trying to hold off. And he's tapping out. The referee's calling for the bell. Takamuri picks up the win and becomes the first ever FFW Adrenaline Champion. Unfortunately for Travis Porter, he just could not find a way to get out of that submission hold. And because of that, now Takamuri is the first ever adrenaline champion. Congratulations to Takamuri. Had he not rolled out of the ring, though, if Travis Porter had been able to keep that momentum, you've got to believe that Travis Porter would be holding that championship right now. I, I firmly believe that in my heart. I, Takamuri did what he had to do to pick up that the championship win tonight which is understandable to an extent, but I personally would not have, uh, 
I, I, if I was a wrestler, I wouldn't have let that happen. I don't know. But Travis Porter gave a great effort tonight. But ladies and gentlemen, it is time. It is time for the Internet Championship. A triple threat elimination match. And people have asked, how is this going to work? It's quite simple. Three men start. One man will be eliminated. And then it will be down to two. And then after that person gets pinned, then that matchup is over. And then we will have a new internet champion. And Rollin Ryder, this young man, ever since he got his hair cut and grew more of a stubble beard, he has much more attitude to him now. He's got a different styled persona, so to speak. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, getting yourself trimmed and taken care of. But what effect does that really take if it all it took was a haircut for him to feel more energetic, like he can do more in matches? For Rollin Ryder, he says that this is what he's meant to do. He's meant to wrestle and he's meant to hold championships. But well, Rollin Ryder needs to prove that tonight. He has a great opportunity and he needs to prove that he can do that. And we're about to find out just how gifted Rollin Ryder is. Is his own personal hype? Is it true or is it just that? Is it just hype? Because his opponents tonight, one of his opponents, his former tag team partner, another opponent, a, a, a great, spectacular wrestler. So yes, Rollin Ryder definitely has his, uh, his work cut out for him tonight. Like I said, he's facing his former tag team partner as well as another gifted wrestler in Lance Owens. And for Lance Owens, this is huge. This is a big opportunity. We found out on Thursday night that no matter what happened between Darren Trinidad and Lance Owens on Thursday night, that they would both be competing in this matchup. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen when these three get into the same ring together. You know, you know that Lance Owens is hungry. He's looking to get a championship around his waist. He's looking to finally get some gold around his waist. And this would be the best way to do it. Pick up the win at our inaugural pay-per-view event, Ground Zero, on September 28th of 2014. Uh, excuse me, September 27th of 2014. It would be the best way for Lance Owens to do it. And picking up the win tonight would speak volumes, ladies and gentlemen, volumes. For this young man, Darren Trinidad, he's looking ready. I'm excited for this matchup to, be, to begin. Just a few moments away from getting this matchup underway. And I'm definitely, I'm pumped, I'm ready. Triple threat, elimination rules. One of these young men are gonna get eliminated quickly. The other two, or the other two, one of them will become the champion. And I'm interested to see how this is gonna happen. Who's gonna take the first elimination and who's gonna take the championship? Get ready to get this matchup underway. The FFW Internet Championship. This is this is intense, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Darren Trinidad, Rollin Ryder, and Lance Owens all competing for one championship. And here we go. And right from the get-go, big running bulldog there from Lance Owens. I may not be able to call all the action as it happens, just seeing as though it is a multi-man match. But as you see, uh, Ryder kind of is hanging back a little bit, allowing Trinidad and Owens to duke it out. And as you hear the fans screaming in attendance. And oh, look at this. Ryder and Owens are going to work together here. A little bit of tag team action, a little bit of tag team chemistry, I should say. Into the cover there. Only a one count on Trinidad. And hopefully throughout, you know, tonight. It's going to be interesting to see how they all do this. And as you see, uh, Trinidad already getting back to his feet, taking severe damage this early in the match. 
Trinidad catches Owens with that big drop take and another one. Now Trinidad catching Owens in that float over neck breaker. And right from behind there, Rollin Ryder with the German suplex with the bridge. One. And only a one count. Oh, and Ryder got caught with that arm drag there by Trinidad. Trinidad here. Wait a second. Trinidad and Owens now. Gonna work together on Rollin Ryder. This is what makes these matches so unique and special. And now Ryder and Owens are working together. This is one heck of a, a good way to uh, throw your opponent off. Or, you know, you never, really, you can't really plan ahead because you've got two people to worry about in this type of environment, and either one of them can pin you and eliminate you, and you know you'd have to go back to the locker room and you wouldn't have any chance at becoming the uh, internet champion. And so, right now, Rollin Ryder, Darren Trinidad, former tag team partners, and Ryder now sent to the apron. Wait a second. Trinidad setting something big up here. Oh, Jesus, a DDT right on the apron. That'll, that'll definitely leave a bruise on the top of the skull. And Owens and Trinidad both staring at Ryder. Ryder is completely down, maybe. And Ryder now back to his feet, thank God. I was going to say, you may have a concussion. And, Trinidad giving chase to uh, Ryder. I, wait a second. I don't like the. Oh, I thought for. I almost thought for a second there that Owens and Trinidad were going to do some more damage to Ryder on the outside, but Ryder now has both Owens and Trinidad targeting him, and that is not good uh, for, for Rollin Ryder. Rollin Ryder may be the first one eliminated, and uh, you know definitely he doesn't want that to happen. At this juncture, you know, Ron, I was going to say it's best for Rollin Ryder to kind of hang back, let Darren Trinidad and Lance Owens tear each other apart. Instead, Ryder now trying to get himself back involved with these two. And oh, that big jumping knee there. And here we go, Lance Owens now wrenching that side camel clutch on Darren Trinidad, and that's. And right now, Ryder's doing the smartest thing he can. He's hanging back. As you see, Ryder already gasping for air. He's, he's taken a lot of damage in such a short match thus far. And then a big hanging backdrop there. Followed up by a big knee. And, and for, for Ryder, he's trying to uh, keep himself involved with both of these, these young men, which is understandable. And, everything but the big sleeper drop from Darren Trinidad followed up by a big knee and again Lance Owens and Trinidad no love loss between them none whatsoever wrenching that submission but Trinidad was able to uh, to get himself out of that submission hold and now oh that backbreaker the inverted backbreaker from, from Trinidad to or from uh, Ryder to Trinidad Allowing Ryder a little bit of time, a little bit of reprieve to get back on the offense. Going for the cover here after that suplex. One, and only a one count as uh, Lance Owens forcefully was able to power himself out. And right now you're looking at what would be the future of the wrestling business. Three young, hungry superstars all looking to make a huge impact. And wait a second, Trinidad. Oh, just got slammed by Ryder. Wait, wait a second. Ryder has Owens up on his shoulders. Oh, Jesus, that knee right to the skull going for the cover here. One, two, three, and Lance Owens has been eliminated. It is down to Rollin Ryder and Darren Trinidad, and Trinidad runs in big running uppercut there, and an uppercut from uh, Rollin Ryder. Oh, and then that shoulder tackle. And just like that for Owens, his night is over. Rollin Ryder now with that surfboard stretch. And for Rollin Ryder, he definitely played his cards right. I mean, I don't care what anybody says. He, he played that situation very well, ladies and gentlemen. That was very well played by Rollin Ryder. Ryder going off the ropes. Oh, big clothesline right to the back of the head. Going for the cover again. One, two, 
and only a two count as uh, Trinidad again forcefully got his shoulder up. And you know the unique thing to this way that this matchup is right now, Darren Trinidad and Rollin Ryder, former tag team partners, they were set to compete for tag team championships. They 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 trained together for many years. They were they were on the road together for many years, so they know each other very well. And for Trinidad and Ryder, this is kind of this is their opportunity to you know, make their launch into the next phase of their careers. And oh, a big DDT there from Rollin Ryder. Again, going for the cover one, two, and only a two count. And you know, Ryder, the more cocky, arrogant of this duo here when they were a team, he was more cocky and arrogant compared to, to Trinidad. But could you imagine? Who, like, if Ryder wins, we may never hear the end of it. He may talk a lot of smack. But if Trinidad wins, we could also hear a lot of smack talk. It just depends. And Trinidad jumps in with that big cross body. But if there's one thing that I know that Darren Trinidad will do, he will not, he will not give up. He will fight until he can no longer get up. He, I've never seen Trinidad just lay down and, oh, the big standing sidekick there. And as you hear, the, the fans in attendance have not sat down. They are still standing from the time when this matchup first began. And Trinidad here setting it up. Hooking the far leg here. One, two, and only a two count. And Trinidad, wait a second, Trinidad setting up the one up. Hooking the far leg here. One, two, to almost a three count, but somehow, some way, some way, Rollin Ryder was able to kick out. And Darren Trinidad now locking in this armbar, thinking to himself, what's it going to take to put Rollin Ryder away? How hungry is Rollin Ryder tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Quick kick right to the abdomen here. And then, ooh, big knee right, across, right to the forehead. That'll, that definitely will not feel good. And another attempt, a big attempt at springboard there. But Trinidad paid for it very Desperately though. And now, oh, a big knee right to the skull. Not a huge flying clothesline. And as you see, those close fist punches. And with Darren Trinidad and Rowland Ryder, I, I don't know if there is any love loss between these two. Like I said, former tag team partners. You know, they very well together they worked. And here we go, Trinidad <clears throat> with that the seated spine buster again. And as you see, Ryder was taunting. And Ryder calling Trinidad to his feet here. He's gonna jump off. Well, he, he stopped there for a second. But no, Trinidad able to uh, to get momentum back in his favor. And, oh, Jesus, another springboard there. Trinidad hooking the far leg. It's maybe at one. No, only a one count as Ryder forcefully got his shoulders off the mat. Trinidad sends Ryder in the hard way. Ryder counters. Wait a second, Ryder setting up the hanging double underhook suplex. Wait, Trinidad. Or Ryder back to the top rope here, calling Ryder back to his feet. Ryder jumps off. Oh, Jesus, that bionic elbow. And Trinidad getting back to his feet, but he is groggy. He has stumbled. And wait a second. Ryder has Trinidad on his shoulders. He's setting it up here. The big knee. In the cover here. One, two, three. And Rollin Ryder has become the first ever FFW Internet Champion at Ground Zero tonight against his former tag team partner, Darren Trinidad. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Rollin Ryder. He literally played his cards right. That is what he did. He played his cards completely right. He, he had a game plan tonight. He went out there and put that plan into action, and now he is the first ever Internet Champion, and for, for Darren Trinidad, and Lance Owens. It was a valiant effort, but Rollin Ryder was meant to win that title tonight. 
So congratulations to uh, to Rollin Ryder on a job well done in that matchup. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is it's almost time to decide the tag team champions. I'm I'm ready to get them decided. I hope you're ready. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you are as well. It should definitely be a barn burner. Tag Team Championships on the line. Mark Lester and Bryson versus Kanji and Masuma. Mark Lester and Bryson have literally been building all kinds of... Uh, they've been, been building a lot of steam for themselves over uh, the, the course of this launch for FFW, especially on Genesis as well as on Ringside. And so for these two, they're, they're feeling this is their natural progression. For Mark Lester, this is his first ever title opportunity. Uh, for Bryson, he is a former TPP internet champion, uh, a two-time internet champion. And, uh, you know, so he, Bryson has singles championship experience, but, but not multi-title or tag team championship experience. But for Kanji and Masuma, these two, two highly un, under... Uh, undervalued wrestlers, especially in the United States. In Japan, these cousins, many times they've wrestled each other in singles, in singles environment, but when they work together, multiple time tag team champions over in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So these two are no strangers to the tag team environment, no strangers to having tag team both Kanji Masuma cousins. It doesn't get much better than that when you're tagging with somebody. You, it's your cousin, you're related. So for these two, I'm Jim Masuma are looking to pick up the tag team titles tonight, and I got a strong feeling that a large portion of the fans in attendance also want them to win tonight. I am ready to get this tag team match underway, get these tag team championships decided. I want to know who's going to be the FFW tag team champions come next episode of, uh, of Genesis. So Bryson and Mark Lester, Kanji and Masuma, the Tag Team Championships. One fall, one win, two, two titles, and two teams. So this is gonna be interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready to get, the, and here we go. This matchup is underway. And Masuma ran right in, quick arm drag there to Bryson. And for Kanji and Masuma, they are much smaller than Bryson and Mark Lester. Bryson and Mark Lester, both about 250, 260 pounds, respectively. Kanji Masuma, 220 pounds and 225 pounds. So they are not big by any size compared to Bryson and Mark Lester, but their speed and experience, I believe, is what will make the difference in this matchup. As you see, Bryson, though, not backing away. He's trying to wrestle the match his way. And that, that's what... Bryson needs to do. He needs to wrestle this matchup his way. Beautiful side headlock takedown from Bryson. Right into that, that triangle choke. He is wrenching on it, but he lets go as Masuma was starting to get himself out of that hole. And now Masuma dropped toe hold to Bryson. Going for a quick cover here. And a one count already on Bryson, surprisingly. And oh, big high knee there from uh, Masuma, and again, the, the speed factor, that's the biggest difference. Uh, that's the difference maker. Oh, oh, and did you see that Kanji grabbed onto Bryce? He had to reach to get him, but he got him. And a little bit of tag team chemistry from the cousins there. And now, now Masuma is in control. And for Kanji and Masuma, that's what they need. They need them to be in control. And, Bryson bringing Kanji in the hard way, taking his eye off the prize, allowing Masuma to, you know, get back in control here. Oh, and a big running elbow there from Masuma, right to the uh, forehead of Bryson. Bryson counters out of the corner there. But again, Masuma, uh, Masuma and Kanji wrestle a strong style. They're very aggressive uh, in the ring, very aggressive with kicks, punches, elbows, suplexes, throws, very technical, very aggressive. And right now, okay, and I was just going to say, Bryson needs to get his tag team partner tagged and get the fresh man in. And now, again, the, the strength. I mean, Bryson clearly stronger than Kanji Masuma. Oh, and that, that elbow drop. We, we saw that last week. And Mark Lester going for the cover here. One, two, no, a two count. Kanji sensed his tag team partner was in danger. 
got into the ring to help his tag team partner. And as you see, Mark Lester and Bryson starting to single out Masuma, assuming that Masuma is the weaker of the two on the tag team. But as you see, big mistake by Mark Lester there, starting to pander to the fans, chalk that up to inexperience. Kanji gets tagged in by Masuma, kick right to the abdomen. And a beautiful snap there, there, followed up by the jumping knee drop. Missed with that shoulder tackle, but runs in with a neck breaker there. I, I'll give it to Mark Lester and Bryson tonight. They are on point. Typically, uh, in this type of environment, I'm not saying that Bryson or Mark Lester would uh, collapse under the pressure, but typically they aren't this prepared. They came in prepared tonight. That's good. In the cover here after that knee, and only a one count as Kanji forcefully got his shoulders up. And, oh, Bryson tried to grab onto Kanji, but Kanji said that's not happening tonight and just knocked Bryson for a loop. And a big kick right to the abdomen there. Oh, and a shoulder tackle. And Mark Lester is wrestling this match the way that he wants to wrestle it, and that's good. He's pacing himself, and, and that was something that Mark Lester throughout time has had a problem with. He wasn't very good at pacing, but now he's doing a great job of pacing himself. Oh, and Kanji there able to turn it around, get some momentum going back in his favor for his team. And the, a series of kicks like that, it may not, it may not have knocked Mark Lester down, but it left him, it left him grog, it left him stunned. And uh, unfortunately, when you got a bunch of kicks going like that, you don't know what to do. You don't know where the next kick is going to be coming from. And now Bryson firing on all cylinders with those chops there. Followed up by that, that gut buster hooking the far leg here. One, two, and a two count. Going off the ropes, but Kanji made a beeline. And oh, big drop kick. Oh, and then that... That rib kick. Wait a second. Kanji tagging in Masuma here. Masuma big no. And a big counter there by Bryce or by Mark Lester. I'm sorry about that. And oh that spinning sambo suplex by Mark Lester. And like I said, Mark Lester and Bryson have been on point tonight, ladies and gentlemen. They have been on point. So far and so far though, I mean I'm I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing from Bryson and Mark Lester. They, they came in ready and prepared into the cover here. One, and only a, a long one count as Mark Lester is able to get his shoulders off the mat. Oh, and Masuma, big raised knee lift there. That'll, that, that'll make you lose some teeth, no doubt about it. <laughs> Mark Lester there, that side belly to belly, hooking the, or, hooking the far leg here. One. And again, Masuma, Masuma's partner, Kanji, sensed danger and broke up the pinfall. Big drop kick right to the back, sending Mark, Mark Lester back to a friendly corner for Masuma. Masuma, Masuma though, took a series of rights, followed up by that spinning suplex by Bryson, or by Mark Lester, I'm sorry, hooking the far leg here. One, two, and almost a three count, as somehow, some way, Masuma was able to kick out and now Masuma gonna try to take out the leg of, of uh, Mark Lester. Masuma tagging in Kanji, the more experienced of the team. But Bryson was back to his feet, sleeper slam there. And Mark Lester going to the top rope, calling Kanji to his feet, but Masuma just threw Mark Lester from the top rope. Kanji's got Kanji out on his feet there. Oh, and a big back chop. Hooking the far leg here. One, two, and a two count for Kanji on Mark Lester. Oh, wait a second. As you see, Masuma here locking in that submission hold on Mark Lester. And unfortunately, the re well, the referee should be counting right now. He shouldn't be allowing that to happen. He should be getting Masuma out of the ring. Now Kanji, a series of kicks here, and then the big head kick. Very, very big head kick there. And now Kanji weighs it sharp. No, whoa, we've seen the submission before from Kanji. You've got to imagine the pressure that puts on your, your cranium. And 
And then a, that little bit of a distraction caused by, oh, and that quick arm drag there. And Lester falls into a tag to Bryson. Big right hand by Bryson. And another forearm there. Bryson coming in like, uh, like he's on fire there. But wait, no. Kanji turns around, big elbow there, right in the corner. Missed with the big elbow drop as uh, Bryson showing his experience. He, he's very well versed uh, in rolling out of the ring if need be. And Bryson, a uh, big power slam there. Wait a second, Bryson. Thinking about something here. He went for a big shoulder tackle, but Masuma rolls him up there with a modified type power bomb. And as you see, Bryson distracted by Masuma, allowing Kanji to get back on the offense. And, it, and a quick roll up here. One, and only a one count as Masuma quickly got in the ring and broke that up. And now <clears throat> Bryson, big knee right to the skull. And as I was saying, when th those distractions happen, it works in the favor of, of uh, Masuma and Kanji, the, the cousins, when they work together like that. That's a chemistry that they have that just Bryson and Mark Lester will never, ever have uh, due to them not being cousins. And Bryson with that uh, grounded forearm. We've seen that numerous times from Bryson, but Bryson's got to, he's got to figure out a way. you got to believe Bryson's trying to soften Kanji up so he can hit that big clothesline. Bryson now again with that triangle choke, but Masuma quickly getting over to his tag team partner to break it up. The kick to the abdomen. Wait a second. We haven't seen this move in a long time. The Bryson bottom there. Hooking the far leg. One, two, three. And that is all she wrote. Bryson and Mark Lester, the new tag team champions of FFW. An impressive, impressive feat by Bryson and Mark Lester. For a few minutes, I thought that they weren't going to get it, but they, they pulled it out. They picked up the wind tonight. And that, that is very, very impressive. I, I'm, I'm proud of both Bryce and Mark Lester. They came, they came here with the plan on winning the Tag Team Championships, and they won them. For Kanji and Masuma, it was a valiant effort, no doubt about that. I mean, I, I honestly thought that they were going to win. Uh, for several minutes, I thought that they were going to win. But unfortunately, uh, you know, Bryce and Mark Lester, the stronger team, physically stronger team, were able to make it go in their favor so that they could win. And ladies and gentlemen, again, congratulations to Bryce and Mark Lester, new tag team champions. But up next, we have the FFW, the newly remodeled FFW Million Dollar Championship. This is big, ladies and gentlemen. This is a championship that has not been defended in over 16 years. A brand new championship. And as you see, Riley Thompson getting ready to come to the ring with his wife, Rochelle. And, uh, you know, on this night, I just, I can't believe what I'm, what I'm about to say, but uh, I just... <laughs> The last time this million dollar championship was defended was in 1998. Uh, and if you watch Die Hard's backlog video that I did about him a couple of years ago, or last year I believe it was, it outlined in 1998 that Die Hard had sustained many injuries. This was one of the final matches he had of 1998, and it was for this championship. Million, and so for Riley Thompson, I don't want to say that this has to do with Junior's parents and Riley's parents, but it kind of does. It's kind of what it feels like to me. Uh, this is Riley's opportunity to fix those rights and wrongs, but of course, Riley has that wild card in his wife. He, he's got her ringside with him. And for Anthony Guerrero Jr., he, he doesn't have anybody coming to ringside with him tonight. But if, if Anthony Guerrero Jr. can stay focused, if he can keep one foot in front of the next, he, he can pick up this win. And, you know, I, at that point, you got to believe that Dyer would be somewhat proud of his son. I would believe that he would be. 
And, uh, you know, you got to believe that Riley Thompson's father, Brandon Thompson, also known as the Blood God, is also watching this matchup. This is this is the culmination right right here of second generation wrestlers. You, not very often do you see true to life second generation wrestlers, but these are true to life second generation wrestlers. And for those of you that don't know, when Die Hard and Brandon Thompson were competing at the, during the same era, you know Anthony Guerrero Jr. and Riley Thompson were both kids. You know, in the arena together, maybe not friends, but they were both there rooting for their fathers in their matches. So now instead of them rooting for their fathers, they got to root for themselves here. We're getting ready to get this million dollar championship match underway. Like I said, this is a championship that has not been defended or contested since 1998. Now in TPP, Dyer did have a million dollar championship made, but it was not this championship. This is the original million dollar championship. This is huge. And uh, this is a big match for both Anthony Guerrero Jr. and for Riley Thompson. This is, this is the make or break, ladies and gentlemen. This is a make or break situation for both of these young men. And I'm ready to get it underway. I hope you're ready. And here we go. Riley Thompson, Anthony Guerrero Jr., a 16-year-old million-dollar championship. One of these guys is going to win that championship tonight. And Riley Thompson here starts it with a side headlock. And a big back chop there. And Junior able to turn around, and, and this is what Junior's got to do. He's got to stay very, very aggressive. He's got to stay very, very aggressive against Riley Thompson tonight. We've seen what Riley Thompson can do. We saw what he did to Kyle Batema. We've seen what he's done in his matches. So Anthony Guerrero Jr. has to stay aggressive. He's got to stay on point, and he's got to continue to fighting as, as hard as he can. Oh, big running clothesline there from Anthony Guerrero Jr. And now Riley Thompson reverses with a snap there. And like I said, you got to believe the wild card is Rochelle Thompson. She is the wild card in this whole in this whole scenario. And big power slam there from Riley Thompson. And in this in this scenario when you base their sizes up between Anthony Guerrero Jr. and Riley Thompson right now, Riley Thompson actually looks like the smaller wrestler, but believe it or not, Riley Thompson is heavier than Anthony Guerrero Jr. and he is taller than Anthony Guerrero Jr. Riley Thompson stands at about six foot six, six foot seven. Anthony Guerrero Jr., six foot one, 212, or I'm sorry, 232 pounds. Riley Thompson, 200 and 38 pounds. So they're very close in weight and proximity of each other, but Riley Thompson is much taller, therefore he's not as muscularly toned as Anthony Guerrero Jr., which is why I constantly make the reference of he's too small to be considered a heavyweight, but he's too big to be considered adrenaline. They, they don't fall in that weight class. Or Anthony Guerrero Jr. does not fall in that weight class because of his body build. But Riley Thompson able to counter out of the corner there. And it is a shame that, you know, it's slim on what titles Anthony Guerrero Jr. can compete for because you've got to believe if, if Jr. fought in the adrenaline division, he would probably, he'd probably do very good in it. He, he's bigger than a lot of the adrenaline superstars. Oh, and a beautiful standing drop kick there from Anthony Guerrero Jr. Uh, you know, but the, the plus side for Anthony Guerrero Jr. when he fights his bigger men is he's faster than him. He, he can fly very fast and very high. Uh, unfortunately, though, it doesn't always work in his favor. And Junior here, a flurry of kicks in the corner right to the chest of Riley Thompson, giving Riley Thompson a little bit of a, a beating there. And, and Rochelle said something to Anthony Guerrero Jr. in the corner there. And, and Junior now setting up. He's going to jump right face first right into, uh, right into Riley Thompson in the corner there. And Anthony Jr. just feeling the energy tonight. And oh, wow, Rochelle just got knocked right off the apron there. Now Riley Thompson realizing that he bumped his, uh, his wife. Now going right for the throat of Anthony Guerrero Jr. That may have been a huge mistake on the part of Anthony Guerrero Jr. And Rochelle coming over to my table now and tearing apart my equipment. Can I get some guys down here to put this back together? I think that may have been frustration on her part. And Jr. just sent Riley right into the, uh, right into the barricade there. Or the announce, my announce table here. I'm sorry about that. 
And, and Riley Thompson, big clothesline from behind. And as you see, Riley Thompson now showing a very vicious mean streak. Stomping right on the side of the face. And I can understand why. He's very upset that uh, his, he bumped into his wife like that. And it, I don't want to say it was Anthony Guerrero Jr.'s fault, but it kind of was Anthony Guerrero Jr.'s fault. And uh, Riley here wrenching on the surfboard stretch and Jr. able to get himself out of it. Riley's able to sidestep that, runs in big knee right to the face. And right, and wait a second, Junior kicked right to the abdomen. Beautiful standing drop kick there. And Riley gonna take a breather coming to the outside here. Anthony Guerrero Jr. taunting to the fans here. And Riley taking his time to get, to get back into the ring. And Riley with a big right hand, but Junior able to, re to react to that and keep it going. Oh, and a big back chop there. And as you see, Rochelle, wait, she was saying something to, uh, to Anthony Junior and Riley in the ring. And Riley, those big right hands there. Big standing drop kick again from Anthony Guerrero Junior. And kick right to the abdomen. Followed up by that head scissors. And, and unfortunately for Anthony Guerrero Jr., he's got to do something different in this scenario. He's, he's got to do some more aggressive offensive moves to Riley Thompson. And ways like Anthony Guerrero Jr. setting it up. Roll the dice out of nowhere. <laughs> Anthony, you should be going for the pin right now. Anthony Jr. might be looking at the pulse checker, but he, Riley was down. He should have pinned Riley right off of that. And the pulse checker. Hooks the far leg here. One, two, oh, wait a second, Rochelle distracting the referee here as uh, Riley Thompson was, was, he wasn't able to kick out there. He was definitely down for more than a three count. But now, Riley back on the offense here in the corner due to the distraction by Rochelle. And you heard the fans, they were not too thrilled about that. And now Riley Thompson with those close fist punches right to the top of the skull. And wait a second, Riley's setting it up here. The snake eyes in the corner. Anthony Guerrero Jr. has taken head damage in this match. He's been choked, he's been punched. A lot of physical damage, ladies and gentlemen. Riley Thompson gonna jump off double axe handle. Going for the cover here. One, two, and only a two count as uh, Junior is able to get his shoulders up with that big jumping clothesline there. Again, hooking the far leg here. One, two, and another two count. Followed up by a succession of big right hands to Anthony Guerrero Jr. As Riley Thompson now locking in that camel clutch as Rochelle is watching her husband go to work. And Junior's got to find a way to get out of the submission hold. As you see, Rochelle saying something to Junior. I, I can't, it sounds like she's telling him to just give up. But Junior able to turn it around. But Riley, so aggressive, so, so aggressive. And Riley with a, that Green Bay plunge. Hooking the far leg again, two, and another two count for Riley Thompson going off the ropes. But Junior with a drop toe hold. Now there's one kick, two kick, and a third kick right to the face. Junior runs in, big drop kick right in the corner. Anthony Junior going to the top rope, calling Riley to his feet. Jumps off, double, oh no, Jesus, a big power slam there. Hooking the far leg, one. Two, this may be it, and no, only a two count for Riley Thompson. Riley thought he had it off of that power, I thought he had it off of that power slam. That was a huge, huge power slam. And Junior trying to fight back, that power slam is 
got to be stinging that on the back of Anthony Guerrero Jr. He's got to be in pain, no doubt about it. And now Jr. sending Riley onto the apron. Wait a second, Riley, big right hand there. Going to the top rope, jumps off. Oh, but wait a second, Jr. caught him. Oh, and that backbreaker. Now, Junior drop kick right to the face. And Junior, another kick to the abdomen. Followed up by a, a big jumping drop kick. For Anthony Guerrero Jr., like I said, he's got to do some high impact moves here. He's got to find a way to get Riley down, hit that pulse checker again, and make sure that Rochelle cannot distract the referee. Junior sends Riley into the ropes. Big standing drop kick there. Again, going for the cover here. But again, Rochelle distracting the referee. Allowing, allowing Riley Thompson to get himself back. And uh, well, wait a second. Junior big drop kick. Wait a second, Junior. The pulse checker or uh, excuse me, the roll of the dice, and Junior now getting fired up here. Sending Riley Thompson to the corner, and Junior get it. Wait a second, right? Rochelle just grabbed his boot there. And wait, wait a second. No, Riley Thompson puts him up to high rise. In the cover here. One, two, not like this. Three, and Riley Thompson has became the new FFW Million Dollar Champion. The championship that hadn't been decided in 16 years, ladies and gentlemen. And Riley Thompson has won that championship. I, I guess congratulations to Riley, but he stole that victory, ladies and gentlemen. That was, that was highway robbery for Anthony Guerrero Jr. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we, we have to go to our main event of the evening. It is time for the FFW Championship to be decided. Jerry Graham versus Adam D. Whitmore. And for Jerry Graham, this has been a tried, a tried and true, or a tried and true battle to get here. And as you see, Jerry Graham sporting his golden attire, signifying that he wants to get gold around his waist tonight. Jerry Graham, definitely, uh, in my in my honest opinion, I've had many people ask me who they thought was who, who I think is going to win, Jerry Graham or Adam D. Whitmore. As much as I love Jerry Graham, I really do. When it comes to technical in-ring ability, Adam D. Whitmore has Jerry Graham beat. When it comes to finishing maneuvers, Adam D. Whitmore possibly has Jerry Graham beat. That's just the way it is. I, Jerry Graham is a very gifted wrestler. He's a he's a great athlete. But and I've said this numerous times. But Adam D. Whitmore has, has been conditioned his entire life to wrestle. Jerry Graham openly says that he started wrestling because yes, he loves wrestling. He loves the business. But he needed money. He needed money, and he ended up really liking what he did. And so he kept wrestling. And that's why Jerry Graham wrestles. So he doesn't, it's not that Jerry Graham doesn't have the drive or the passion, because I'm sure he does. He's here every single week competing. So he definitely has the drive and, and the passion. But Adam D. Whitmore was born knowing that he wanted to wrestle. So for Adam D. Whitmore, this is almost like a second inch. And we've seen, we've seen what happened at uh, TVP Urban Warfare. And we saw who won that match. We don't know if that's going to happen again. We're going to find out in just a few moments who would win between Adam D. Whitmore and Jerry Graham in the main title opportunity slot. And this is this is the main event, ladies and gentlemen. This is what it says on your ticket stub: Adam D. Whitmore versus Jerry Graham. And I can't think of a better better way to brand, to brand yourself at the first pay-per-view Ground Zero 
and having your name show up as victorious in the main event championship match. That just oozes the respect that any wrestler would want to have. So for these two, somebody's going to go home a winner and somebody's going to go home a loser. That's just the way it is. There's no, there's no way around it. There's no draw. There's no tie. There will be a champion crown tonight. Either Adam D. Whitmore or Jerry Graham. I, I hate to say it, but I gotta give, I gotta give it to Adam D. Whitmore. Jerry Graham has taken a lot of damage over the past few weeks, and uh, Whitmore has not. I mean, Whitmore's been been in some tough matches. Don't get me wrong, but Jerry Graham has taken uh, fu's on the chairs, and Adam D. Whitmore has not. So here we go: Adam D. Whitmore, Jerry Graham. One on one for the FFW Championship. No disqualification, no holds barred. As you see, the stare down here. And oh, a big back chop from Adam D. Whitmore. Oh, and a big right hand from Jerry Graham. Oh, and another, and a big back chop from Jerry Graham. And Adam D. Whitmore responds with a chop of his own. Oh, and a chop from Jerry Graham. And as you saw, Whitmore there, a uh, quick right hand, followed by a big back chop of his own. I mean, this is back chop mania, ladies and gentlemen. Jerry Graham counters with a big back drop. Whitmore sends Graham into the ropes. Quick back drop here. And as you see, Whitmore already taunting. Jerry Graham setting Whitmore into the ropes. Followed up by that neck breaker, that tilt, that tilt whirl neck breaker there, that spinning neck breaker. As Jerry Graham starting to try to set the pace here. Jerry Graham the first one to throw the heavy, heavy rights in this matchup. And I gotta admit, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a spectacular night and and we're at the main event now. Oh, and Whitmore there tripped up Jerry Graham on his way out. Whitmore jumps off. Big attempted flying clothesline, but Graham able to sidestep it there. And now Jerry Graham... Big close fist punches right, right out here. The referee can't count. There, there's no disqualification. The pinfall has to happen in the ring. But there's no disqualifications tonight, ladies and gentlemen. None whatsoever. And I, this has been very exciting thus far. And Jerry Graham now. Oh, big knee. And, you know, I love, I love, you know, being a commentator because I get to see all these matches up close and personal. As you see, they're right next to my table here as Jerry Graham, the, another knee there right to the skull. Picked up the ring bell. Oh, just rattled the brain of Adam D. Whitmore. And Jerry Graham not... Wasting any time working on uh, with that hardware there. And Whitmore there, big back chop. Followed up by that belly to side, belly to belly there. Hooking the far leg. One, two, and only a two count as Jerry Graham forcefully got his shoulder off the mat. Again, going for the cover here, but this time Jerry Graham gets a two count. Jerry Graham counters. Whitmore taking a breather. Wait a second, Whitmore. Oh, catches Jerry Graham head first there. As uh, Adam D. Whitmore now starting to get himself in a momentous position. And we saw this before. Oh, and that stomp right on the head there. Hooking the far leg. This may be it. One, two, and only a two count. As somehow, some way, Jerry Graham able to get himself off the mat. Jerry Graham catches. 
catches Adam D. Whitmore in that spinning neck breaker. And that spinning neck breaker has became a, a mainstay for, uh, for Jerry Graham, which is, is great. And now Jerry Graham here with the side headlock. He's going to send, oh, and a big shoulder tackle there from, from Jerry Graham to Adam D. Whitmore. And these two, they have that professional rivalry. You know, these are two of the top guys in FFW. And Jerry Graham here looking for that lion tamer. He's got it locked in. And the question is, will Whitmore tap as uh, Jerry Graham is wrenching away on this? We've seen Graham put many, many wrestlers away with this maneuver, with this specific maneuver. We've seen Jerry Graham win many, many matches this way. And he is wrenching on it. And Whitmore can't really crawl to the ropes. He does, he, Jerry Graham reluctantly let go there. But uh, Whitmore did not tap. Going for the cover here. One, two. Oh, no. Only a, a late one count. I thought for sure it was going to be a two count. And Whitmore eating a lot of maneuvers here. And Whitmore, oh, that crazy uppercut there. Into the cover here. One, two. And that uppercut was the same way that Whitmore took out Kanji. But Whitmore... He's, he's a he's a fighter. Adam D. Whitmore is a fighter, and Whitmore is signaling for the time shift, possibly here. Hook, hooks the arms here. This is not the time shift, but Graham counters. Big Samoan drop. Big momentum changer right there. And now Graham, what's he thinking? Wait a second. Graham, there's one power bomb. There's the second power bomb. He might be looking for the trifecta. The three power bomb combo. And Jerry Graham looking to put him away. He calls this maneuver that he's going to do the saving grace. Oh no. The running power slam there. Hooking the far leg here. One, two, and a long two count there for Jerry Graham. As Jerry Graham sends Whitmore to the far corner, ladies and gentlemen. The far corner of the ring. And, and Graham here at shoulder power slam from the top rope. Hooking the far leg here. One, two, and it, almost a three count again. As uh, somehow Jerry Graham, or uh, Adam D. Whitmore was able to kick out. And Whitmore now sends, pulls Graham back into that, uh, that back chop. Followed by that next snap. Adam D. Whitmore here on the shoulder. Oh, slams Jerry Graham over on his shoulders there. And now it looks like Whitmore is starting to look for some hardware here. He's got a steel chair. Oh, and a steel chair right to the face. And that may be all she wrote. And Whitmore swinging for the fences, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and Jerry Graham using the steel chair as a weapon. Almost a three count there. That was so, so close to a three count. Jerry Graham, a series of big right hands there. Going for the cover here. One, two. And another long two count for Adam D. Whitmore. As Jerry Graham is trying to, you know, he's trying to put Whitmore away and win that championship. You don't see Jerry Graham use a steel chair very often, but when he does. Adam D. Whitmore going to go face first right here on my announce table. Oh, and that big backbreaker. Jerry Graham thinking of something here. Wait a second. Wait a second. Jerry Graham looking for the saving grace out here on the outside. Wait a second. Wait a second. He's got him positioned. Jesus, through my announce table, ladies and gentlemen. And unfortunately for, for Adam B. Whitmore, you... 
and, and for Jerry, especially for Jerry Graham, you can't pin him on the outside. You got to get him into the ring. And Graham moves him into the ring here. Into the cover. This may be it. One, two, to almost a three count. But somehow, some way, somehow, some way, ladies and gentlemen. I have no idea how that happened. And now you see the frustration building on Jerry Graham as uh, he's starting to lay the footwork into Adam B. Whitmore, just stomping away. But Whitmore responds, and a, that big, crazy, wild uppercut again. Whitmore might be looking for the time shift. I'm not 100% sure here. Kick to the abdomen. Whitmore setting him up. Jerry Graham, oh, time shift. Into the cover, he hooks the far leg. One, two, th almost a three count for Adam D. Whitmore as Jerry Graham able to forcefully get his shoulder off the mat. And now Whitmore cinching in that seated arm break or that arm bar on the ground. Just trying to keep this match to a pace that he can work after he's been powerbombed through my announce table, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, they've got our construction guy or our team out here trying to work on putting my table back together. And Jerry Graham going off the ropes. Oh, kick, a very, very low kick right to the abdomen. And, and in, this, in this environment, anything goes. Hooking the far leg here, one, two, and another two count for Jerry Graham. But like I was saying, anything goes, ladies and gentlemen. Anything goes. And between these two, they are laying it all on the line tonight. Like I said, somebody's gonna walk away with the FFW Championship tonight, and somebody's gonna walk away as, as the loser. That's just the way that it's going to happen. There's no way around that. And Jerry Graham with a big counter. Jerry Graham thinking here. Jerry Graham, that's a long ways away, Jerry. It's a very long ways away. Jumps off with a missed double axe handle there. But that headbutt, that headbutt connected right to the uh, back of the head there. That's, that's one way to take care of business, Jerry. And you got to believe the longer this match goes, the more damage, uh, you know, the harder it is for them to cause moves that can cause damage to their opponent because they're so tired. Another long two count for Jerry Graham on Adam B. Whitmore. You know, they gotta be thinking, how, what can I do to win this matchup? And Whitmore here, setting up the double underhook suplex. Whitmore again, calling Graham to his feet. Big running drop kick. How often do you see Adam D. Whitmore use a running drop kick? Not very often. And that's when you know desperation is kicking in. Ooh, and that cloverleaf type uh, backbreaker. That that'll definitely cause some some pain, some undue or unwanted pain to you, no doubt about it. Jerry Graham, big back chop in the corner here. Sending Whitmore to the far corner, runs in, he calls that the Graham Cracker, the big body splash in the corner. Jerry Graham. Starting to try to get some momentum going. Wait a second, Jerry Graham's got it. Cinching in that Lion Tamer again. Will Whitmore submit? Jerry's trying, he was trying to wrench it there, but he, he forcefully let go. And Jerry Graham, that spinning neck breaker, once again connects. And Jerry's gotta be thinking, what's it gonna take here to put him away? And wait a second, Jerry Graham, there's one power bomb. There's the second power bomb. Can he hit the trifecta? Three power bombs. Jerry Graham again going for the cover here. One, two, and almost a three count again. And big backdrop from Adam D. Whitman. As this match continues on. Now Whitmore has Jerry Graham up on his shoulders and again that Green Bay plunge. What is Whitmore thinking here? Whitmore trying to figure out what he can do to finally put Jerry Graham down. 
Ooh, a, a basic elbow drop. Nothing fancy about it, just a basic elbow drop. And a big side belly to belly roll. And again, Whitmore now starting to focus his attack on, on the chest area. This way, when he goes for a time shift, it'll help him out. And oh, that big uppercut again. And wait a second, we see, we've seen this. There it is, that, that stop on the ground, calling Graham to his feet. A plethora of moves, one after another, keeping you unaware of your surroundings. The time shift. Going for the cover, this may be it. One, two, ten. Oh my goodness, so, so close to a three count for Adam D. Whitmore. As you see, Whitmore yelling at the referee, saying that it should have been a three count, allowing Jerry Graham to get back on the offense there. And for Jerry Graham, how, mi how much more do, do either of these young men have in their tanks? I don't think either of them have enough to, uh, oh, and a big clothesline in the corner there. I don't think either of them have enough to kick out of another finishing maneuver. And Jerry Graham exposing that top turnbuckle pad. Oh, and a big back chop there from Jerry Graham. Jerry Graham sending... Ooh, Whitmore into that exposed turnbuckle, chest first. Looking the far leg, one, two, and a, a long two count again. And like I said, one more finishing maneuver, and this matchup may be over it. You gotta imagine the next big move is gonna win this matchup. And wait a second, Whitmore setting, oh, he's got him up in the shoulder break, in that shoulder breaker. When we're still trying to soften up the chest of Jerry Graham. He, he, he wants to put him away. Big back chop there, and another big back chop. The end has got to be near for somebody. And again, that Green Bay, that Green Bay plunge. I mean, like I said, the end is near. Whitmore, big body splash, hooks the far leg here. One, two, and so close again to the three count. Oh, big back chop there. Wait a second, Jerry Graham. Again, there's one power bomb. There's the second power bomb. And the third power bomb from Jerry Graham. And Jerry Graham's thinking, what's it gonna take here? What is it going to take? Oh, Whitmore back first right into the, uh, the turnbuckle the hard way there. Ooh, and that time chest first. Wait a second, Jerry Graham setting it up. He's calling for the saving grace, this time in the ring. Jerry Graham putting some rotation on it. Jackknifes the shoulders, that's gotta be it. Why is Jerry not going? Wait a second, Jerry Graham. He's got the lion tamer cinched in. Will Whitmore tap? He, there's no road breaks, no disqualifications. Whitmore's either gotta tap or get out of this submission hold here. And Jerry Graham is wrenching, and Whitmore is trying. He's trying with every fiber of his being. But Jerry Graham is wrenching. And just like that, this matchup is over, and Jerry Graham, the new FFW champion, via the, the submission win, the Lion Team. Jerry Graham has culminated his journey thus far in FFW claiming that championship. Congratulations to Jerry Graham tonight. Between the two of them, that was a very back and forth, uh, tit for tat type environment. Uh, very, like I said, very, very back and forth between Jerry Graham and Adam B. Whitmore. Ladies and gentlemen, your new FFW champion, Jerry Graham. Congratulations, Jerry. I, you deserve it. You fought extremely hard. Ladies and gentlemen, we are almost out of time. We've got just a few moments left. I want to thank you very much for tuning in for Ground Zero tonight. Make sure to tune in next week for, for Genesis. You know, I want to see, I want to see you all there because we all want to know what's going to happen, what, what the repercussions are going to be. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Christopher Billings. Thank you, thank you again for joining us tonight. Have a good night, everybody. Be safe, take care of each other, and we will see you guys next time.